Alec Baldwin now facing criminal charges for the shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the Rust movie set. The New Mexico DA is set to charge him with two counts of involuntary manslaughter. Brooke Sigmund has all the details. Brooke. Hey, that's right, Carly Todd. If convicted, those charges could land Baldwin up to six and a half years behind bars. New Mexico District Attorney Mary Carmack always said this in her decision, quote, after a thorough review of the evidence and the laws of the state of New Mexico, I've determined that there is sufficient evidence to file criminal charges against Alec Baldwin and other members of the Rust film crew. On my watch, no one is above the law and everyone deserves justice. Now, this all began in October of 2021 when police say Baldwin pointed his prop gun at Helena Hutchins while practicing a scene when it went off, striking her in the chest and grazing another crew member in the shoulder. According to an affidavit, the actor was allegedly told by crew members that the revolver was not loaded. Baldwin has also repeatedly claimed he did not pull the trigger. Listen. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So no. you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. never. That was the training that I had. You don't point a gun at me and, and pull the trigger. I feel that, that, that uh, someone is responsible for what happened, and I can't say who that is, but I know it's not me. Baldwin's claim directly contradicting an FBI forensic analysis, which says the gun could not have been fired without pulling the trigger. Prosecutors say he is completely responsible for Hutchins' tragic death. Listen. We definitely believe he pulled the trigger. Um, the, the FBI lab report confirms that, so definitely the trigger was pulled. Mr. Baldwin had a duty at, his, at the base level to never hold a gun and point it at a person while pulling the trigger. But he also had a duty um, as an actor and a producer on that set to have the bullets checked or to check them himself to make sure that they weren't live. And a professional armorer tells Fox News there is no reason this should ever have happened. There is no reason under any circumstance that a live round should ever be in the atmosphere of a movie set uh, for any reason whatsoever. And there's protocols in place to make sure that it doesn't happen. And well, as far as him saying that he didn't fire the weapon, well, we all know that you know, in order to discharge a weapon, one in good working condition, you know, there are different mechanisms in place, and one of which is the mechanism of the trigger that has to be pressed. But Baldwin's legal team is blaming the crew member who allegedly assured him that the gun was not loaded. They say, quote, this decision to store Selena Hutchins' tragic death and represents a terrible miscarriage of justice. Mr. Baldwin had no reason to believe that there was a live bullet in the gun or anywhere on the movie set. He relied on the professionals with whom he worked, who assured him the gun did not have live rounds. Alec Baldwin and the film's set armorer are expected to be formally charged with two counts of involuntary manslaughter each by the end of the month. Guys. All right, Brooke, thank you very much. With that, let us bring in Fox Nation host tires. Awesome to have you on the program. Thank you, sir. Are you Thanks surprised by this decision? Yeah, actually, I am. You know, and I'm not a fan of Alec Baldwin, and I'm sure he's not a fan of mine either. But uh, I just find it shocking. Uh, one, a press conference I thought was a little much. And, and two, having been on a set, having been in movies where I've used guns and et cetera, when they hand you that gun and it's cold, you have all the assurance in the world from a trained professional that there's no live rounds in there. That, that probably was not even a thought in anyone's head. So I feel that the responsibility is on the person who presented the gun. And their, their argument about the trigger, the trigger. If you are holding a gun and not be, it doesn't take much for to pull the trigger. You could inadvertently easily, if you're holding it wrong, you're not paying attention and go off. But again, he never, Never in his wildest imagination would you think that there's a live round in there. Yeah, I don't think anyone expected these charges. Uh, they've either restarted filming this movie or are about to. And because of the civil settlement, Helena Hutchins' husband is now an executive producer. How do you continue on with this movie now that he's, he's facing manslaughter charges? But that's not uncommon. The Crow, Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son, was shot during a stunt accident, and that cult classic The Crow, uh -huh. and they continued on and replaced the actor. So it's not uncommon for that. It, I personally feel if someone dies on a set, that should be it. That should be it. Yeah, you know, but then it's just, and that's another thing too. They've settled this civilly. So when it goes to looking for a jury, how are you going to get, when the jury's, when everyone's like, well, he admitted for some responsibility. So that would also, I would think, kind of skew a jury of his peers being the fact that he's already ad admitted to some wrongdoing in terms of being responsible. So to that point, do you think this gets to a jury? Do you think 
think this goes to trial? Or does Baldwin say, uh-oh, I actually wasn't anticipating getting charged. I better plead out. I would... If it was me, I would probably try to seek a plea if it's possible. But in the other side of it, I don't know if the prosecution is looking for it. It just all the semantics and extras and, and interviews and press. We're having a press release to like let you know whether we're going to press charges. And I thought was a little bit much. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, last hour, Todd uh, spoke to a defense attorney. Uh, here is her take on this whole situation. Watch this. The if we're saying he's being filed on because he was wearing the executive producer hat. Well, then there's a number of other individuals that they could have filed on. In, in reality, the reason he's being filed on is because he was the last person who could have possibly prevented this tragedy by checking that gun, and he ended up pulling that trigger. That's why, and, and, and he's being made an example out of. And then there's also the cover of the New York Post talking about this, and it, the headline is Baldwin to blame. The story is everywhere, Tyrus. Yeah, like I said, it, and it's his name. Name recognition has a lot to do with it. And again, it still goes, I, I don't know, maybe it's just I watched too much Murder, She Wrote at Night in my hotel, but <laughs> I, it always just goes back to me to, I always look at intent and motive. And again, how did the live round even get in yeah. that gun? And that would be that is who armor. is responsible. That would be the big mysterious reveal at the end of the show of who put the bullet in the gun. Yeah, Tyrus, huge fan of Angela Lansbury. Turns out the feeling was mutual. Angela Lansbury loved I, it. I think I've seen every episode of Murder, She Wrote, by the way. I used to watch when I was I even watched Bed Noms and Broomsticks, just putting it out. It's a great show. Yeah. Meantime, got to get to this. NWA returning to Florida. Tickets now available for Nuff Said on February 11th. Cool. This is your jam. Tell yeah. us about it. So I'm defending the World NWA World Heavyweight Championship against the internet wrestling champion, Matt Cardona, a.k.a. a lot of people remember him. He was Zack Ryder uh, in the WWE. And uh, we have a long history. And so the NWA has a long history. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, Harley Race, the list goes on and on who, who've held this title. And so I'm going back. We're going back to historic Tampa where the NWA has a tradition. So I'll be defending the title there in February. Okay, so, so you're going to be on the road a lot. Yes. Nothing yes. new for you. No, <laughs> You're always road. traveling. Jacksonville, you're going to Georgia, you're going to Knoxville, Tennessee, New Jersey. Thank you. Yeah, New Jersey's sold out already. Oh, I was uh, going to say, yeah. I, I could see I got tickets Jersey. still available for Jacksonville and uh, the second night in uh, Knoxville, and there's a few tickets sprinkled you, around. But, yeah, I'm telling jokes during the day and, and whooping behind at night. So it's just it's just a really good time. Plus, we got the Gutfeld show. And, oh, my gosh, and you're so busy. Stuff. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, in, it's peaks and valleys. I'll be all busy at once and then nothing at yeah, all. Yeah, so yeah. take it while you get it. Uh, well, how do you train for something like this? Well, the awesome people at Fox, we have an Olympic gym on the first it's floor. Amazing, and right? I usually scare the civilians <laughs> as I walk up and down in there, but I'm in there every day. So they one of the nice things about being in the Fox family is they, they take care of us. So we have they an sure amazing do. gym to stay on top of. Before we let you go, last time you were up this early, was it to change a child's diaper or because Snoop needed something when you were his bodyguard? <laughs> okay, first of all, he never slept. So uh, early mornings, we would know, and it wasn't to change a diaper. It was usually to catch a flight. Yes. I got to get my behind home because my kids are waiting on me. Uh, Tyrus, you're the best. Thank you so much for joining us Thank this morning. Thank you, guys. Busy guy. Great analysis as well. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.